Good evening, boys and girls, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of State of the Empire, the Xbox Empire, the little chapter of Xbox goodness residing over there at PSVG. Uh, our emperor is on the other side of the galaxy tonight, so you've got me in the host chair, Donnie, and I've brought Kevin. Hello. Hey, buddy. Oh, hey, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. And Josh. Greetings, complaints. <laughs> Wrong show. You can't do that here. You can't do that here. You already voted off. Play, play everywhere. Crossplay. <laughs> there you go. It's good stuff. Um, it's been an interesting month for Xbox, so this is going to be a little different show than Nathan's done. Um, I don't think I don't think I have the extensive. Let's talk about the history of of Xbox, you know, studios or, or memories that Nathan does, and uh, I'm a little more news focused. So that's that's what the show is going to be. Um, but we're going to talk about XCloud. And the streaming stuff that was announced this month. And we're also going to talk about the upcoming event, XO18, which is uh, on the near horizon, just mere weeks away, gentlemen. Um, but before we do, let's just run through a couple quick notes, that uh, updates that came to Xbox uh, just this week. So, kicking off show, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, The Orange Box, and Portal, all now backwards compatible, all X enhanced. They run at higher resolutions, nine times the original pixel count. They're getting the full X treatment. On Xbox One X, what do you guys think about that? Either of you, well, one, do either of you own any of these games? Uh, I do not, uh, and I, but I also don't have an Xbox One X, so it doesn't really affect me. Um, <laughs> however, I have played Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, and uh, Portal, so it's exciting to see because Portal's a fantastic game that literally every gamer should have played at some point. This will make it more accessible, I think, for some people to go back to it. Um, and Left 4 Dead are good. I'm interested to see if they hold up after all this time. But uh, it is exciting news. I love seeing whenever they make these announcements for what, what has come back as backwards compatibility. And then, of course, Xbox One X Enhanced for those that have it. Sure. Um, because, Kevin, you are my game share partner, I just want to let you know, you do own the Orange Box. It's sitting over there in your library. You can go download that. Ah, library, okay. Yeah. So you can play some Portal if you want, which I did. Uh, I went and played some Portal. It was the first thing I thought of, too. I was like, man, we can play Portal. Um, all I can say is, all I can report is it looks in runs as good as I ever thought it did, so I can only imagine that it's much better than yeah, what right. I thought it did, because <laughs> it, it looks great. Um, Josh, are you going to play any of these uh, fantastic games? You know, there was a time not too long ago where I traded in all of my Xbox 360 games. Oh, no. Because <clears throat> I said, I'm not ever going to play these, right? Uh, yeah, I did own every single one of those games that uh, they just added. Um, Left 4 Dead 2 was huge in this house, specifically for for um, <clears throat> action, survival shooter, or whatever you want to consider it. Um, I love the Orange Box, Portal, Portal 2. I mean, classic games that I just kind of held on to forever. And then, you know, going digital with the game share uh, with Kyle, too. Like, I'm like, I could be trading these games in and getting money. Mm -hmm. And that was the idea. I did hold on to, like, um, Crackdown 1, Halo 4... A um, couple other games that I kind of just wanted to hold on to um, for sentimental reasons, but yeah, I should have held on. I should have held on to all of them. <laughs> um, I mean, I think we all agree. I mean, this is not new news, but these are like four amazing games that if you've mm -hmm. never played them and you have an Xbox, like you owe it to yourself to play these. I know for me personally, I will be buying Left 4 Dead 2 the moment it goes on sale. I'm not going to pay $19.99 for Left 4 Dead 2 because I've played nah. it like two or three times. But the moment it goes on sale or hits Game Pass, I'm intrigued. I want to see it on X. I want to see, you know, I want to I see if it holds up, as Kevin kind of alluded to. That's what I, I really want to go back and yeah. see it, to see if it holds up. Um, those aren't the only games that came to uh, backwards compatibility this month. Crisis, Crisis 2, and Crisis 3 all came. And they're not X enhanced. But here's the interesting thing. <laughs> Eurogamer did the report on it. So for those of you who ever followed the crisis, I mean, this is the benchmark game for PCs. <laughs> if you yeah. had a video card and you wanted to see what it could do, you started booting up crisis and started putting it through its ringers. And most, most computers, like even today, most modern computers cannot run crisis at 30 frames per second. Yeah. And you're a gamer reporting through Digital Foundry that apparently the Xbox One X basically runs it at 31 frames locked. Minor, minor dips, but probably as best as those games have ever been, definitely on console. And uh, that's cool, because they didn't even get that full, I guess, you know, treatment. Kind of makes you wonder if, if they should have. 
But uh, I never played Crisis outside of, like, you know, when it hit PlayStation Plus or Games with Gold or something, like booting it up to see what all the fuss was about. But outside of that, I've never really dove into those. Uh, have any? Of, have either of you ever beat them? Uh, I've beaten one and two, never played three, because ironically enough, when I worked uh, and, and ran Geek Squad, we used Crisis to test when we did uh, installs. It's like, hey, we got this new graphics card. And, you know, the question is, but can it play Crisis? So we would always <laughs> test it with the ringer. So I I played it enough to beat it when you when you just string it along there. But, uh, yeah, it they're not, they're not, let's be honest, as, as a game itself, they're not great games. They're okay. Uh, but they do look incredible when they're playing it at, at its best. So the fact that Xbox One X can do that is amazing in itself. Uh, and it's truly a testament to the, the hardware and the dedication Microsoft put into this for sure. Um, so it's very cool to see, but I, I don't see a ton of gamers in my mind flocking to this to play through Crisis, uh, you know, excellent narrative and, you know, gameplay mechanics. Now it just looks real pretty. Uh, it's like, it's like when you buy a Blu-ray player or 4k TV and you buy planet earth, you're going to watch it once. Cause it looks really good. You are never going to watch that again, but you could show it off to other people. Maybe this is what crisis is for the Xbox one X. There you go. The the planet Earth for Xbox consoles. <laughs> um, getting into some more, I guess, like some really good news. Game Pass got updated. Tis Halloween. You know, we were a week away from Halloween. It's spooky season. And uh, I love that they're getting into the fun with the seasonal events. So they, they launched their, their uh, Halloween spooky sale. They have all kinds of stuff that's off sale. And, and coinciding with that, they announced some new games coming to Xbox Game Pass. Dead Island Riptide Definitive Edition, Outlast, Hello Neighbor, and Observer. All coming to get uh, Xbox Game Pass. With the addition, they also already had Graveyard Keeper, State of Decay 2, Dead Rising 4, Evil, a uh, Resident Evil, and Resident Evil Zero that were already in there. They're, they're deeming kind of the Halloween collection. So they're taking all their spooky games, you know, they're doing banners, little promotional art, and they're tweeting about it all week. And I, I think it's cool. People like seasonal events. You know, everybody likes it. You get into the holiday spirit, whatever it is, Valentine's Day, Christmas, Easter, Halloween. And uh, this is just another, I think, really good example, use case of how Game Pass can can propagate and can be used to even give old games, you know, new life. Uh, I mean, I, I think, Kevin, you've already booted up Dead Island. I saw <laughs> so, you yeah, playing, I, right? I, uh, so I went all in on this. Uh, I've been working from home the last couple of days. So in between actually doing some work, I've been downloading games and trying them out. So I, I did, in fact, try uh, Dead Island Retro Rampage, uh, Dead Island Riptide, Hello Neighbor, uh, Dead Rising 3. I missed 4. I didn't know that was on there. I saw 2, 3. I didn't see 4, so I might have just looked in the wrong place there. Uh, but yeah, I'm all in on it. I love it. Um, Hello Neighbor, I will say. Have you, either of you guys played it yet? No. no. It, it's not good. It's not <laughs> good. Uh, it, it's kind of cool, the art style and what it's trying to do. It's not a very fun game at all. Um, so you can kind of <laughs> glance over that one. Uh, Dead Island, I like the original Dead Island, so I actually re-downloaded that because that's also on Game Pass. Uh, Riptide does not do as well, but I remember when Riptide came out, it didn't run as well, period. Uh, it just seemed to be different, like lower grade than what Dead Island was. Um, but I just like those games where you're getting mauled by hordes of zombies. So uh, Dead Rising 3 is what I'm playing right now. I streamed a little bit of that this afternoon. Um, I've, I'm really digging that. I, I'm having a lot of fun with that one, so that, that's good. What about the retro but, yeah. one? I've played one mm-hmm. or two, but I never played the retro game. It, the retro is not fun. It's weird. So it's almost like an endless runner. And zombies are coming at you. So you have, like, these three lanes your character can move through. And as zombies get closer, you kind of fight them, like, Streets of Rage style, which okay. sounds good, except for the fact that it's just you moving forward and them moving forward. So you can actually move and miss them completely. Um, and oh, they so don't it's like on like, rails. Yeah, exactly. It's like oh. a rails side-scroller. It's very weird. Um, I only did, like, two levels of that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. I, I didn't really like it. But, yeah, I, I thought it was the concept of the game was cooler than what it was once I actually booted up and started. So I remember seeing the screenshots when they first announced it and it's been on sale a lot and it's always kind of like, Hmm, maybe I should buy it. And I've held off, uh, but it's in our library and I downloaded it and I was like, eh, no, it's not, not very good. What about you, Josh? You're getting in on the festivities. Um, <clears throat> as much as I love game pass, I've been too caught up in current stuff right now. So, <laughs> and destiny, which is not current. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I'm I'm a big fan of them adding all this stuff. I, I have played the Dead Island games before. Um, I know Observer was one of the games. I have that um, from Twitch Prime. So um, I played a little bit of that on my PC. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's great. Like, 
another great benefit of Game Pass. Like, you can't complain that even if the games aren't great, you get to try these games. Like, Hello Neighbor, I've always thought about trying it. Exactly. Just never wanted to pull the trigger on it. And you have the experience where you don't enjoy it, but it just as easily could have been the other way. And it could be a game you wanted to buy. So, absolutely. Um, I love that's, that that's, why, it, so. that's why I burned through them. I was just like, hey, man, I want to check a bunch of these out. Now's the time to, it is the season. Um, so yeah, that's why I've been jumping in and trying to find the ones that I like and that I'll play for a little bit while we're waiting for uh, the next big thing for me to play. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a great idea. I almost bought Hello Neighbor once on Switch, and Lucas saved me. He was like, "Don't buy that game." And then like I started researching it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, apparently it's not very good." Um, which I started researching these, and apparently Observer is really good. There's a really high Metacritic score, really high Open Critic score. Um, I read the review on Windows Central. I think they gave it like a. Like a 9.5 out of 10 like apparently it's wow. really good so i'm very much looking forward to getting to observer um soon um kevin has some news that he'd like to share before we get into the jour moment oh yeah this podcast. yeah we talked about this and i brought up to josh a little bit earlier too so taco bell once again has given away xbox one x's uh with their uh their boxes so you purchase a five dollar double chalupa box between october 18th and november 21st and it will enter you to win the Xbox One X Platinum Limited Edition bundle. So it comes with a console, a white uh, wireless controller, Elite controller, three months of Game Pass and Xbox Live, and then they'll also be given out basically every 10 minutes throughout the promotion. Uh, they'll be distributed to winners uh, like within 72 hours of winning if they get it. So they're giving away basically 5,000 of these consoles. Coolest part of these consoles, uh, when you turn it on, it doesn't make that traditional noise that the Xbox does. It actually makes the Taco Bell gong noise, <laughs> which I think is amazing. Like, you remember when they did the R2-D2 360 and it made, like, the R2-D2 noises? Sure. This will make Taco Bell noises, so it's pretty cool. Um, Major Nelson actually unboxed one live on uh, Mixer this afternoon uh, during his uh, Radio Nelson show. Um, so he was kind of showing off and, and doing the sound effects and stuff like that. It's just a really cool thing. Uh, I know Taco Bell does this a couple times a year typically, so just another chance for people to, to jump in at that because it basically just began and it runs all the way through. I actually saw November, somebody so. win one of these on Twitter yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah, they were tweeting at Major Nelson. They were like, oh, my, I just bought one. They took a picture of their Taco Bell and everything, and then all of a sudden, like three seconds later, there's a screenshot of their phone. They're like, oh, my God, I actually won. Oh, I have not won. <laughs> uh, I have tried four times now, not just me. <laughs> That is my a family lot of Taco boxes. Bell. No, 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 not just me. Uh, we have we have not won yet, so that's not a bad idea. Take the family to Taco Bell. We're all ordering. I don't want a chalupa. You everybody's get a chalupa box. It's is a that... double chalupa. You will eat it all. Now Here let me ask you a question. Taco Bell is super picky about their special orders. Are they going to get mad at me if I want no sour cream? No, because I order mine with no tomatoes. So, mm-hmm. but I get the I get the spicy. One, two, they put jalapenos in it. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, I know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. There you go. Don't tell my doctor. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right. For the topic at hand, introductions out of the way. This month, Microsoft unveiled Project X Cloud. Now, we talked about this on, like, every show on the PSVG network, so we're not going to, like, rehash all of that again. I am going to run through some just, like, some facts and then we're going to lead into a discussion. All right. So Project X Cloud was revealed. Public trials go out in 2019. So we're not that far away from possibly somebody maybe you need to put hands on. Um, in their initial intro video, they said the goal of Project X Cloud is to deliver a quality experience for all gamers on all devices that's consistent with the speed and high fidelity gamers experience and expect on their PCs and consoles. So... Some of the tech stuff, they, they plan to merge four custom Xbox consoles, strip down into like a module server blade, and then build like these server stacks out of these. This is how they're doing it um, with their Microsoft Azure, you know, cloud storage stuff, which they have 40 or 54 of these spanning across 140 countries across the globe. So it's a pretty big infrastructure. Um, I was reading into some of this tech stuff. Apparently, this is actually very similar to how PlayStation Now is set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, they're kind of doing almost the same thing. And then um, they said the studios will have the, the ability to deploy their games to uh, Project X Cloud without any additional work. Excuse me. It's currently running at 10 megabits per second. So to put that in perspective, an HD movie on Netflix runs at about five. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's really light, I think, than when a lot of, you know, because when we talk about streaming, a lot of things that come up almost instantly is internet service providers, data caps, things like that. 
chances are if you're streaming, you know, HD 4K video, this is something you could probably do. Uh, Microsoft is promoting um, heavily the support for Bluetooth uh, with their controllers um, with with phone manufacturers. They, they mentioned Samsung um, specifically and Android phones having that stuff like natively maybe built into upcoming models. And uh, they plan to, to approach the game streaming with a, this new hybrid solution delivering both the uh, blend of both local, which is your console hardware in the house, as well as cloud-based processing. Um, so you'll be able to render maybe some stuff on the device as well as some stuff through the cloud, making it a, like a, a faster, better experience than what we think of today when we actually think of streaming. Now, it's, it's interesting because all three of us here in this show have all played project stream from Google, which just mm-hmm. entered kind of this fray, this talk about, you know, streaming and streaming games. And Google's like very new to this in terms of being a, a gaming platform outside of just, you know, like apps on your phone. So I, I really just wanted to, I wanted to get this thing started with, um, have, have since you've played project stream, has, has your opinion changed? Cause you know, we, we've heard about streaming really kind of nonstop since E3. Since Phil Spitzer said we're going to do something streaming, and then PlayStation continues to push the streaming, and now they let you download things, and we we knew Google was doing something. Now that you've put your hands on it, do you think it's more uh, uh, of an avenue that that you think you could adopt, or do you still kind of you know on the fence about it? What do you think, Josh? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've always since before Xbox One was Xbox One, I was a fan of their original idea of a console. So I've kind of been a fan of the streaming um, aspect forever. But, yeah, I mean, I was skeptical just like everybody else was. And and our country suffers from a lack of fair price and equal distribution of bandwidth. Uh, And that's not fair to every gamer. But it's even harder for game companies um, to try to do something like that, which was my initial, like, fear with with the Xbox streaming situation but um booting up project stream and not seeing anything i expected as far as frame rate issues and i expected it to be slow and chuggy and not looking super great because i'm just running it on this computer that isn't built for gaming you know so i just assumed it would be something cool to check out see where they were and you know, what I got really blew me away. I mean, it's not perfect, but <clears throat> how self-aware it is, how it can, uh, like, immediately let you know when it knows your signal isn't great. Um, and I'm not even hardwired. I'm running this Wi-Fi. Like, if I did that hardwired, I can't even imagine having an issue, period. So, my like, I would really like to dig out my old laptop, <clears throat> plug it into the router, and give it a shot on the laptop and see what happens as well because um, it's really took it took me from being skeptical to being totally on board um, with the idea. Obviously, everyone isn't where maybe Xbox is somewhere way totally different where Google is right now, um, and we got we have to see like <clears throat> are we in the point in the industry where people will be sharing best practices and helping each other get better, or is this just going to become a a competition thing again and if you look at like the steam link for uh pc it's terrible uh, it drops all the time and that's kind of where my worry was so obviously not everyone has nailed what google is doing right now so i would be interested to see uh once we get our hands on with the microsoft one you know how far microsoft has come in the same regards um, Kevin? but yeah i'm all on board yeah i mean i definitely Project Stream changed my opinion for sure because I was kind of like, hey, I know eventually it's going to lead to this, but I'm not on board with it. But my experience, same thing as Josh mentioned, was it was much, much better than I was expecting it to be. I was pleasantly surprised by it. So I'm okay with the idea of it. Now, the only concerns I have are with what they're talking about with uh, xCloud is that this thing's going to be on everything from your tablets to your cell phones, everything like that. That I think is we are a ways off from that. Um, because I think the hardwired thing is something you kind of need, or even just something with that type of Wi-Fi receiver to be able to pull in a high bandwidth versus me being, you know, on my commute to work in the subway train playing 
X Cloud. I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Like, all right, we can't even get consistent 4G. And I know Verizon's already like talking 5G. We can't get consistent 4G across the country, let alone that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't think long term portability wise, it's really going to be what they're kind of projecting it to be, at least now. Uh, as far as home consoles and PCs, I think it's fine. Um, hopefully they can learn a little bit from what Google's doing. Cause I mean, Google did a beta and it ran like it was a finished project in my mind. Like that, that's what I would expect it to be had I been paying for it. Um, so I think Microsoft kind of needs to prove what they're doing here. Probably do the same thing, put out some betas, let people try it for free, kind of maybe test the, the waters there and see how it works out. Don't do a PlayStation now approach where it's like, Hey, here's a service. By the way, it's going to be uber expensive and we're going to change it, you know, multiple times. Just Microsoft needs to decide what it's going to be, release it and, and have it ready to go. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm for it. It's just, I don't see it being the portability solution yet, but as far as like sitting at home doing it, absolutely. Computer console, no problem. I'm very intrigued and hope that they continue with their um, storefront and the marketing that they're doing now. I'm hoping that project X cloud just allows you to stream the library you've already bought and have access to. I hope it's not a separate service or maybe it is a separate service, but like maybe if you have a live, maybe you can use it for free or something. I'm hoping that Microsoft does something like that. Um, I think that would be the best way to un- unveil this in terms of a marketability thing. Because, yeah, the moment they start venturing into it's another thing you have to pay for. And, then, you know, one of my streaming games I already bought, <laughs> I already own, you know, like that type of stuff gets real weird. So, yeah, but- for sure. I mean, you look at I think you're right with on point with making it baked into whatever we're already paying for, because you're looking right now. I, I find it there's not a lot of people that can argue against Game Pass as far as a value perspective. So, like, hey, you got to get Game Pass. You need live, so that's understandable. But now if you need to get this third thing, I think that's where people are starting being like, all right, Microsoft, really, what are you trying to do here? And I think either Xbox sales are going to suffer or Xbox gaming software sales are going to suffer. Because might just be like, hey, I don't need to buy a game anymore. I mean, I've talked about it uh, on our Discord before that next gen, I may just not buy games. I'll just get whatever I get for free between all these different services and be fine. Like, yeah, I'll be behind the times a bit, but eventually all the big stuff ends up somewhere. Uh, so maybe that's the digital age, but I think financially, if that's what they're banking everything on is three subscriptions, something's got to give somewhere. Not to mention, they've, you know, was it Groove Music and Windows and <laughs> Word and every other <laughs> subscription that they try to peddle? So I, I've been kind of thinking, or at least hoping, that that'd be the thing that they go, is they keep their market that they have, keep the services that they have, and, and use this streaming platform as just another way of getting people in the door like i may not pay monthly for a streaming service but if i am at work later i'm on vacation or i've got a moment maybe i do sync mm-hmm. up a controller and try out halo on my phone or tablet or another pc somewhere because it's you know it's there and i've already paid for it i think that's a real like trojan horse way of getting it in there um so i've got a curveball that i want to throw at you guys whoa dev come down yeah, yeah. <laughs> taking a page out of ot I kind of want to. I want to go future, future on this a little bit. A little play with this idea. Is it safe to say that we all think that this is just a matter of utility? When the network gets there, when five G gets there, when people have access, like this is the the way video games are probably going. Whether it be ten years, fifty years, a hundred years from now, like that's not what we're arguing. But it's just this makes a lot of sense for you know for developers and companies. It definitely. I mean, logistically in itself, just not having to produce discs and box and ship them out to all the retailers and the retailers have to give it space. And depending on what you're doing, how much space do they get? You know, inventory quantities, pre-order things. I think, yeah, it's the way it's going. I, like you said, we're not really going to talk time. I think we're a ways from it being, you know, the sole solution. But I think we're going to start seeing it more and more definitely as, as stuff becomes more accessible. So I want to spin yeah. this in an interesting way. I'll throw it to you, Josh. Yeah. Let you see what you think about this. I'm kind of equating this to what we're seeing right now with Netflix. So we've got Netflix, and it's really not all that different than, than like, the dot-com boom. If this is, in fact, where folks are going, then we've got these, these companies that have been primarily focused on delivering hardware products to consumers, and that's how they make their money. And if we get away from that, and I'm not saying we get totally away from it, Maybe they do provide a console or a box or something like that, right? But if they lessen that focus of theirs, then they become more of like a a media delivering product, right? We're kind of seeing this battle happen right now with Netflix and Disney. 
and ESPN mm-hmm. and anybody else that owns the rights to media where they're all trying to gobble up as much as they can because it's like this arms race to make sure that people stick with you, you know, whether it be HBO or anything like that. And if you think about even before that, what Comcast has done with like with Internet and buying up websites and all the media mergers that happened between TV and Internet folks, you know, back in the day in terms of, you know, Fox and CBS buying out, you know, media delivery rights and, and contents and the regional stuff. The things that like NFL has done with DirecTV and selling exclusivity. Do you think I've got like really kind of two questions on this this little topic that I wanted to venture into? In this scenario, the future, do you see Xbox, Sony, I'll throw Nintendo in there, as the conglomerate that starts snatching up all the media to distribute? Or do you think that if this is the future, if it becomes so popular, especially being so reliant on internet, do you think it's possible we see mergers with other companies snatching up these video games to booster their own portfolio? Could we see a Disney partnership? Could we see Comcast, Time Warner, you know, exclusively we've got Xbox streaming. If you want to play Xbox games, you've got to be a, you know, an AT&T U-verse customer. Like that all kind of stuff gets wonky. We're seeing it now. Like there's a lot of it happening. It's happening now. We see it. There's all kinds of these exclusivity deals, these mergers, these acquisitions. I don't think anybody's really thought about that with this because it's so new. You know, we're still trying to get it all out, but like I'm starting to wonder as the focus on hardware lessens, the focus on IPs and software you can deliver goes up. What does that mean for these hardware manufacturers? And what does that mean for like third parties? Like is Ubisoft just going to have a place where people can stream all of their games or they're going to be like exclusivity deals. So this is somebody eventually going to say you can only play Ubisoft games on, on our streaming service. So anyway, large, open-ended topic but I, I just don't think i've really heard anybody take that slant on it yet so i thought it'd be an interesting conversation what do you think josh well so before we even look at that i think where you got to look at if you go all the way back something you were talking about <clears throat> earlier uh with all these streaming services that are out now like dc universe and disney coming out with theirs and all this stuff so if you go jump back maybe 10 years you have every cable provider complaining they can't just pick the channels they want. They want a la carte service. And now they're getting it and they hate it. They don't want to pay $5 for CBS All Access. They just want it included in their TV package. So the problem that we're going to have, <clears throat> same with the gaming, right? You take away a console or you take away a physical game from someone and all of a sudden they can't live their life without that disc. Because what happens if all their data goes away or whatever their reason. So the thing that's going to prevent any of this inevitable digital future is how long is it going to take for people to get used to the idea of having only digital, not physical things, which is still a challenge for me. Um, And what is the safeguard from that? Like you need someone coming out telling people there it's okay to go digital. You're not going to lose all your stuff because people haven't heard that. People just hear if something happens, something happens, you know, and then you hear the argument like, well, if you have a physical game, you don't technically own it either, which is true, but you have something tangible. But once we look at the future of gaming, the future of everything is digital right now. Not, you know, everything is going digital that can go digital. Jobs are digital. Like, <clears throat> once you, you know, people are outsourcing jobs in the United States every day to people who are doing it on PCs. Uh, this, this, everything is changing. We just need the infrastructure to change with the, what's inevitably going to be Disney buying Nintendo or Comcast buying Microsoft or vice versa. Like, I don't think it's it's crazy to think that a company would buy a video game um, company because look at how much money video games are making. Look at the market for video games. And like Kevin said, with the costs of discs going away, they're making more money digitally. And if you look at, like, the switch tax, as we call it, you pay extra for a cartridge, people are more inclined to buy that game digitally. 
And that's the way you need to make people coast them in. You put the blinders on them. You tell them, this is what you want. Don't look back. This is what you're getting. You can't like, as much as I said, people are, the people are going to slow down digital progression. It just needs to kind of be forced onto people. If you don't give them the option for physical media, then eventually they'll stop complaining because they well, think, need Red Dead Redemption 3 digital. True. I think I think a caveat to that is, or you just make it super convenient and so cheap that they, that they forget about it. That's, you know, you go to the Spotify, the Netflix model, <clears throat> people wanted their DVDs forever until it was just all on your TV. And that's kind of where I was going with this whole, if this is truly is the future, where do we see these companies landing? Because like Google entering the fray is a big yeah. deal. <laughs> you know, like if, if everybody just starts to go streaming, maybe ne- like maybe Nintendo, for example, says, we're just going to put all of our stuff on project stream. And now they're not, now they're no longer the hardware provider. Now they're just the software. Now they're just Ubisoft at that point. You know, like it's, it's right. interesting to think that like these companies might change completely and what we think of them in, let's say 20 years. You know, like it I could think be completely years different. Is a good timeline because I don't, I don't think. Even I'm not trying to scare people in this soon. podcast. I'm not trying to doom and gloom. Yeah. The streaming's coming. <clears throat> I'm just trying to say, like, I don't think people are really thinking about that. You know, people are thinking of this convenience, all these devices, portability. You know, I get it. Like tablets, that's cool. We've got PlayStation now. We've got Xbox. It's just a matter of somebody making it marketable and and economical for people to adapt it. But the question, the, really the question is, what are the consequences to the industry as we know it once somebody gets there? You know, like once somebody gets there, then what? <laughs> it becomes interesting. Like who becomes Steam? What happens to Microsoft as we know it? Like Nintendo without their crazy hardware gimmicks, like if they're just making games, that's interesting. Yeah. Kevin's still on mute. I was saying uh, GameStop <laughs> would be gone for sure. For sure. Yeah, a lot, a lot of box stores will be struggling for uh, to make up in the video game accessory industry. That's yep, really yep. where they make their money. So it will be interesting to see. What oh, I think people would still buy custom controllers and stuff like that. Like I, Microsoft can still pump out the controllers, the elite controllers and stuff like that, That's like exclusive models based on games. So people still go out and buy that stuff. But the and we know they don't make a ton off the actual software. It's all about the accessories and the hardware, as far as the the retailer is concerned. Anyway, so. I think most will be okay, but I don't think GameStop can function on just hardware. They need that software. And with like the whole streaming thing being so, again, internet relied upon, is there any point where we think internet service providers see this market and they go, we need to snatch a piece of this pie? Uh, I, I think prices just continue <laughs> to go up as they are anyway. They're, they're, at least in the United States, if you look at internet service, it's all... It's all money driven. Like if mm-hmm. you look at places like Dubai and other countries where everyone has incredible internet and they're just paying a flat fee, that's what that's what we need. We, we can't need. have I can't be paying <clears throat> forty dollars more for so I can tell you, I pay a lot more money than Kyle pays, and Kyle gets way better internet than I do. Yeah, he and does. it's not fair. <laughs> So sure. That's that's our biggest hurdle is you you can't like you can get a, a switch <clears throat> into a kid's hand for Christmas relatively easy, but if it's relying on internet speeds, it might be a totally different story. You might be paying as much in internet costs just to get that switch, which makes it completely unattainable for a lot of families. Thanks, Obama. So you have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, you got to worry about it. Uh, you want to you got to worry about your customer base, and if you just want middle upper class people playing your consoles, then go ahead and go cloud right now. But you're not going to see that until the economy figures out a way to make internet affordable, maybe by charging us more taxes. <laughs> right, and then and then you figure too is is this whole we didn't really talk about this yet is the streaming stuff works well enough. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we've all played that on there. What happens if you try and do Fortnite entirely streaming and multiplayer like then you start running into like okay everybody might be able to play but then somebody might have a distinct advantage because their internet it's Kyle's internet versus Josh's internet and that that may cause issues there too so like you got to realize that 
if they do make this digital transition, it also not only needs to be able to handle single player experiences, it's going to need to capture the multiplayer, Call of Duty, whatnot. You can't just say, okay, all games are digital except for these ones here. Like, it's going to be all or nothing. Yeah. Sure. Just to rewind a little bit, um, just to back off of, of the streaming stuff, you know, Microsoft is, they're, they're planning a, a hybrid approach, as I think most people are, at least for the near the near term. I, I, I don't think consoles and hardware are going away anytime soon. I think we'll have an Xbox something. We'll have an Xbox. We'll have other consoles to play. Um, I just think it's, it's interesting knowing how, you know, Time Warner Cable bought out like TNT and TBS, knowing how Disney bought Star Wars. Like if, if these companies turn into more of a IP distributor versus a hardware distributor, I wonder what type of business deals come down the pike um, in that type of wake, because it could change everything that we know. Mm. All right, let's talk about EXO. EXO is, uh, what is it? Today is the 25th. We're, what, 10, 15 days away? Two Two weeks weeks away. Super exciting. So Microsoft at the last month, or this month's Inside Xbox show, Phil Spencer announced that the return of EXO uh, is coming, EXO 18, which is November 10th and 11th in Mexico City. And uh, for those of you that don't know, um, or are not old enough to know, EXO is a returning show, basically a Microsoft Fan Fest experience that, you know, they kind of do, they've been doing, they've, they've never stopped doing it. Um, but back in the OG days, like the Xbox, original Xbox, they did one of these almost uh, every year, I think up until 2010 at least, in, in the way that we know it. They've actually done it every year, I believe, in Canada, but I'm not sure if that's canon. You know, so like they they do the shows, but nobody like, you know, they're not like these big global wide. It's more of like just a fan event that you get to go to and you get to play whatever games they showed at E3 and stuff. But they're called EXOs. The EXO that Phil Spencer was talking about bringing back and resuscitating was kind of Xbox's take on a PSX or a Nintendo Direct. Is their time to shine where they showcase and highlight their own games? So they're going to do that uh, next month. And he made mention that they would be bringing big news. I mean, he, he said it, and he's he's very... I think a lot of people really like Phil because it, you don't seem to get a whole lot of CEO speak with him. He said, we know our fans want the news to pop their excitement, and we're going to bring that. I don't know how you could say it any other way to maybe you know lessen expectations. He knows exactly what people are hoping this is going to be. So I want to talk about our, our expectations. And before I do, I just want to say... If you're thinking about what this show used to be, Fable was unveiled at XO. XO1, uh, Project Ego was Fable. The acquisition of Rare was unveiled at XO3, I believe. So, I mean, like, this, this has a legacy of, of actually coming down with some pretty big announcements. And uh, obviously, we've already, we've already talked about the rumors of Xbox probably acquiring Obsidian. That's been in the news for weeks. Um, I have to think that that's one of these announcements that we get, we get at this little show. But uh, before we talk about just predictions, what you want to see, what are your expectations for the show? Like, Josh, are you expecting E3 levels? A PSX light thing? Are you thinking like inside Xbox times two? What what are you what are you thinking? Where 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 is your expectation level? To be totally honest, I don't know what the heck to expect. Um, I'm kind of excited about it though. I'm I'm hoping it's better than Germany and it's just as good as E3. Okay. <laughs> like, so better than Gamescom. That you're expecting something <clears throat> better than Gamescom. Better than ba- ga- Gamescom's <clears throat> delivery service, if okay. you will. Uh, it was, it was, uh, in my opinion, it was, it was a big letdown. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, Phil doesn't typically hype things up, uh, so I feel like this is going to be a big thing. Okay. I hope so. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm there with Josh. It needs to be better than Gamescom. That was, it, it wasn't exciting, and there wasn't its presentation format for them doing the. Um, uh, inside Xbox for what, like four or five hours, and they didn't really say much, like <laughs> at all. It's like, here's a new bundle. Okay, what's special about this bundle? It comes with the game, and there was like <laughs> three or four of them. So it's like, man, come on, like they they did show the controller, um, you know, which was cool, but it's not, it's not it's not exciting. Uh, so I think for this one, uh, I, I expect bigger announcements. We'll get to predictions in a minute. I know that, so I'm not gonna get, go there. But I do think the biggest thing that I need for them to do to, to, to 
reel me in is the presentation format needs to be much better. It cannot simply be a four or five hour uh, inside Xbox show, which they're kind of saying like, hey, we're going to present it just like this. And it's like, I, I don't want that. Everyone kind of says inside Xbox for the most part, even the diehard Xbox fans say it's a little long winded often. And that's just a regular inside Xbox show. So I'm scared when they're like, hey, we have 20 announcements. How long this goes on for in an exaggerated format? If you have stuff to talk about and you're like, boom, boom, nail me with these big things and, and get me excited, then I'm all for it. But even then, you hit like the two-hour mark, you're starting to kind of lose people. So I just hope they reel it in a little bit and focus on the big things and, and have something exciting to talk about in, in a good format that's easily digestible. Now, I watched the last Inside Xbox, which was just a regular monthly one, and it was not nearly that long. I mean, it was it felt long because they were just showing <laughs> bundles and trailers to <laughs> game. Like, it felt long, but... It wasn't that. It wasn't that long. It was definitely the, the Gamescom one was. It was what two, two and a half, three hours. The Gamescom one was really long, but I think a regular one's like, yeah, yeah, right. Regular one's like an hour, hour and a half. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though, but they only have like ten to fifteen minutes worth of content, and they just drag. And I was like, here's this controller, and, and you know, Major Nelson will break out the white gloves, yeah. and he'll unbox it, and he'll show it off for twenty minutes. Hey, John, what do you think about this controller? Susie, what do you think about this controller? And that's what I need them to. They need to bring it in. They need to take a page out of Nintendo Direct and say, here's the thing. Here it is. Excited. Here's the date. Boom. Next one. Move on. Like that. If that's what they need to bring to keep people's excitement up, because I may be really excited for that controller or whatever you're showing, but then you talk about it for twenty minutes and don't have anything to say, you've lost me. Okay. So I already mentioned the Obsidian rumor. I'll go ahead and take the bullet with the first prediction um, because this has been, I wouldn't say widely reported. This has been speculated for a long time now. And I think this makes sense. Phil Spencer mentioned in his little hype for this event that third party partners would be coming and assisting with this. Mm -hmm. We've had the um, Splinter Cell rumors out there. Yep. Forever since the Wildland stuff, Odyssey's got Easter eggs. Like this has been a long-standing thing. It has a history of being on Xbox's stage. It makes sense for me. Maybe they don't have anything to show. I don't know if it's in development or not, but this makes sense to me for them to come out and show a screenshot, a trailer, a title screen of uh, just you know Eve's just saying, "Boy, we're making." Splinter Cell, and it's going to be awesome on Xbox. I could totally see that being an announcement here for XO18. What do you guys think? Guaranteed. I, I'm, I'm with you there. It, it's it's a long time coming. It fits. It's a big announcement, but it's not like earth shattering. It's not like, hey, I don't, I'm not sure it's going to be an exclusive. It might be a timed exclusive kind of deal, but it is something that will get people's attentions on that stage for what they're talking about for sure. But yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet that we're going to see some Splinter Cell. Yeah, I mean, he's got that Xbox screen. You got to go with Sam Fisher at Microsoft stage. Mm -hmm. I think any type of exclusivity for Splinter Cell would be huge news. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that that would be big news for me. All right, Josh, give us one prediction. All right, it's a wild one. <clears throat> I talked about it. I briefly mentioned it on this week's um, Board of Video Games. Uh, it's very fresh, uh, but I think in some aspect, I don't know what, I think... On stage, we see uh, Jade Raymond. Microsoft would be foolish not to scoop her up right now, whether it's to work with the big box or to work with Ninja Theory. Um, she's a genius. She's super talented. I'm such a big fan of hers. So it's more of a wish than a prediction. But <clears throat> if they don't go after her, someone else, she'll end up with Sony. I guarantee it. Or like, Definitely. It would be a Kojima type thing for sure. Yeah. If they snag her, so, it would be just as big as that for sure. So you snag her and just give her her own studio and let her do whatever she wants either. to do. Or just put her on a project, have her be a lead, something. Yep. Just to get that leadership in. Like Microsoft is obviously a big changing company and studio right now. I think she could be on the initiative. She could work with Ninja Theory. There's so many possibilities for her because of what she can do in the games she's worked on that I think it would be awesome. I love that prediction. That's a really good one. Good job, Josh. Do, do you want a safe one or do you want a crazy one? Do this choice, buddy. We're going to get through them all. All right. Crackdown 3 will be dated and will be shown heavily at XO. Not that everyone's still excited for it, but they're going to make you excited for it by putting it on that stage, talking about it, giving us a hard date. And, of course, we'll mention numerous times it'll be available day one on Game Pass. Listen here, sure. Xboxers. We brought Jade in, and she's completely redone Crackdown. It's a brand <laughs> new game. <laughs> 
Now that would be exciting. <laughs> I think, barring, I don't know what they could do for that for, for that game. Um, it's it's in, it's in. I'm still holding out hope for it because it looks fun. I've always said that, but it's it's in this interesting place because we've seen so much of it. It feels hard. Like it seems like a big task to reverse course on public opinion on it. You know, it's not yeah. like dreams. We were talking about this earlier. We know about dreams. We've known about dreams forever, but we really don't know anything about dreams. We just know it exists. Mm-hmm. Whereas Crackdown, we know, I feel like I know everything about it, and it's still not here. It's like, what else? What could they be doing? <laughs> no, that's the thing, too. Like, Crackdown could look totally different again. That first time we saw that's it, true. So we saw it last, it was not the same type of game at all in my mind. And, and you're right. Crackdown, historically, is a fun game. Crackdown 1 and 2 were fun games. Like, this one, right from day one, did not seem fun to me. Like, so I, I want them to get me back into it to be excited for it because I, I want, I really want Xbox to land a Game Pass exclusive that sticks with people long term. Like, we had Sea of Thieves, hype level up, dropped off. Uh, State of Decay 2, hype level up, dropped off. I'm already seeing it with Forza, and it's not just me. Um, I, I've heard numerous people say they're kind of done with their or they'll, or they'll just play it occasionally. Like, hey, it's not something I'm going to dive in and stick with. I want them to come out with that killer app that will get people to stick with it. Because right now, and th- this is going to get some people eyebrows raised, Game Pass is the equivalent of PSVR right now. It has all its potential in the world, but they don't have that killer app to make people shell out and say, I want to do this. I want to keep using this thing. It's just something I will pick up from time to time. And that's what all these games that are coming out on Game Pass so far have been as far as exclusive titles. Like, they're exclusive big ones that they've tried to reel everyone in with. They're they're fun for a month or two or three, and then people stop talking about it. Okay. My prediction is simply, considering the fact that they, they named this EXO, I say they go back to the drawing book and they pull one out of their... Uh out of their past, and I think we finally see Fable talked about. We know Fable's in development. We know it's a thing. It's been widely reported. I think now they finally show it to us. I don't know what they show us. I don't know if they've got a trailer. I don't know if they've got concept art. Maybe it's just a title screen. Um, But I think, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they kicked off the show with a whole little, hey, ladies and gentlemen, 20 years ago, we had EXO and we showed you Fable. What a better way to bring it back than showing mm-hmm. you the next fable. So yeah, it's just kinda... a cinematic trailer. Do something. They got to have something I, more than concept art and title. They need to show a little something. So now yeah. the question is, who's doing it? Playground. Okay. Yeah, we know Playground's doing it, or at least Do we? that's been reported. They that they split into two teams, and somebody at Playground, one of their teams, is doing it. So yeah, like the Forza folks have left to to go on to bigger and better things, I guess, with Fable, which excites me because, I mean. It's weird that if a company that makes car games are making the next Fable game at, at least a little bit. I think that's weird. Um, but I also think it's probably one of their best developers. I mean, I think there's it's, it's almost inarguable that their best games this generation have been the Forza series. So, like, lead with your best foot forward. Like, heck yeah. And, uh, guys, I'm just I'm ready for Fable to come back. Mm-hmm. That, sure. That's my big hype moment. So, Josh, next prediction? Um, it's not a crazy prediction. I... But I'm pretty sure they're going to try to steal some of the some PlayStation um, hype away from Kingdom Hearts and show us a bunch more uh, Kingdom Hearts three stuff. Because if you talk to anybody about Kingdom Hearts three, all they do is talk about playing it on PlayStation. At least in my experience, um, and I understand why because um, it hasn't been on the Xbox. Yeah. But they this is a, this could be a big thing for them, and they they weren't able to get you know the first original games like that trilogy or whatever the heck you want to call that collection, um, which would have been big for, for Microsoft. Maybe that's part of an announcement too, that mm-hmm. you can play those finally, but I think we'll see. Um, they just started teasing some new stuff like Baymax and um, they keep adding more characters to this game that has not yeah. come out yet, but <laughs> I think we'll see um, some more from Kingdom Hearts and hopefully in a bigger way than, than at E3. Definitely. I mean, that, that's a good point, Josh. You're right. It, it's nobody's talking about Kingdom Hearts on Xbox. It's all Sony talk, which makes sense because that's what they've all been. But keeping in mind that there really hasn't been a new one on a console, well, like a home console, since PS2. So yeah. we got to keep that in mind. Like that's totally different. But yeah, if they do want to hype it, though, I feel like they have to have the other games come to Xbox. Whether that's a Game Pass announcement, show an awesome trailer, and say, "Hey, by the way, Kingdom Hearts One and Two available on Game Pass right now today." That'd be big. Xbox One X enhanced. Like, go for it. That that's huge. 
that'll get me to boot him up again. And I love the series, so that that's okay. that's one way to turn me on it. Kevin, you're up. All right, I'm going with a little crazy one, and I talked about this before. Actually, I didn't talk about it. I put it in the news notes for Dev and Coach when they took over PSVG, and that's the rumored Arkham Universe game. Mm. So mm. at first, everyone said, no, it's not true. But more and more places are picking yeah. up this story, saying that something's going on, and there's a lot more detail than people would expect from a rumor. Now, it may be completely wrong, but in my mind, here's my thoughts. They need to have something. Uh, they've seen what Sony did with Spider-Man, and I mean, they knew when Spider-Man was announced that Sony had a big thing. So Xbox could have started the gears turning then on getting something for them. And if that's this Arkham Universe, this is something that could get people excited again uh, for Batman. Everyone loves Batman formula. You figure if Rocksteady does it again, uh, they have all the templates there. Like, the game's there. It's just a matter of, like, putting it together in pieces. It's my which... understanding with the rumors that the rumors are all breaking that Rocksteady was working on just another Arkham thing, and this is it, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's all the rumors are saying. That's a new game. Uh, co-op capable, uh, yeah. featuring the whole Bat family. So you have all the characters that were in Arkham Knight coming back for this one, uh, making it multiplayer, using the same environment, stuff like that. So it, a lot of the, the stuff is there already that you have to kind of assemble and make it into this title. But if they're able to do something now, will it be as big as Spider-Man? I don't think so. But this is still something big that if they can tote that they have it first or they have it exclusive, this is a good move for Microsoft to do something to kind of cushion that blow a little bit from what Spider-Man does. Because developers got to be looking at saying, okay, Spider-Man came out. This was on Sony. did really well. Other developers might start looking at that saying, look, well, then I should take mine to Sony. Xbox needs those titles to come out and say, hey, this is what we have. This is big. You want to bring your business over here? This is a quick, easy one, I think, in my mind to do it and get people excited. I know... If for me, I'd be in on it. I figured Josh would be in on another Batman game. So, Wow. Mm-hmm. That is a prediction and a half. Mm-hmm. That's huge. I don't think anybody could buy Batman, but um, I mean, that'd be big. That'd be massive if somebody could get exclu- even timed. But I mean, to be quite honest with you, in today's market, even a marketing deal mm-hmm. means a lot. If yep. they just market it as every time you see Batman, it's Xbox, plays best on Xbox, Xbox One X, that's huge. We've already seen that with kingdom hearts and destiny and other games that are multi-platform but for whatever reason people you know they go one way because that's all they see so you know, that's that's huge um those were my best my best ones i know mo thinks there's another developer acquisition i have no idea who it could be to be quite honest with you i, I i've thought about it quite a bit i don't know who's you know maybe on the ropes or who's looking to be acquired um, rock steady rock steady they just buy that <laughs> would be earth shattering. It would be absolutely <laughs> earth shattering if Phil Spencer just said, "We now own Rock City." <laughs> wow, um, that would be huge. Um, like I said, I, I've, I've postulated for a while maybe Techland. Um, I don't know. Um, I also think I don't think it's like outside the realm of possibility that we see some PUBG update. Um, I feel like it's mm-hmm. due for a really big something. If they get a lot of competition now, um, you know, a lot of people are vying for that for that attention span on the tv screen so you would make sense that now is a really good time like if they've got anything at all to say like man they got to start saying it <laughs> they got to start saying it they got to start telling somebody that that something's on the way well they got the league the the comp- competitive league out now for that too so i'm sure there'll be some sort of event there just like uh, e3 had the Fortnite event i'm sure they'll do something for for PUBG there um kind of a given thing but i know I mean, a lot of people have just moved on yeah. That, that full retail release was, yeah, it was a little bit of a bump, but it's still not there at all. It's tough to play. They need to, yeah, they need to make a, a move. Something drastic needs to happen. And then the last thing that I mean, I was really going to say, and I hope this doesn't take away from any other predictions you guys have remaining, but you got to think that we're going to get some more news on things that we already know about. We'll see some new Ori, um, <laughs> you know, finalized dates, all that. We'll get something maybe on these Gears of War games that we've been expecting, the Funko oh, right. Pop game, the Gears of War um, XCOM game, tactics game that's only coming to PC. I'm hoping that maybe that they change that and it comes to Xbox and then whatever this Xbox uh, Gears game that's coming out next year, that we get some more info on all that. I I just Mm -hmm. think we'll, um, I think that's to be expected. So any other predictions from you guys? I had one more and it was like right right in line with Kevin um, because Microsoft has to be looking at Spider-Man thinking, what the heck are we going to do? So I'm thinking... If you think back two E3s ago, we saw a little teaser for an Avengers game that's supposed mm-hmm. to be coming out that we never yep. heard from again. Yep. I think that this would be a good opportunity um, for them to sweep that up. That'd um, be huge. 
it's and it's you know it's in the same universe as spider-man uh which could lead to interesting problems with game companies in the future <laughs> uh but i think they need to to work on whether it's batman or they also rumor that that game might be a justice league game mm-hmm. Um, or if it's Avengers or something, they need to grab this um, superhero bandwagon and and run with it and try to get some more people to their console. Because, I mean, when you look at it, no matter what way you look at it, PlayStation's crushing them, and they need to get some of those people over to Xbox. And superheroes seem to be the way to go. If you look at the sales numbers for Spider-Man, oh my god. Yeah, and I mean, you look at the movies, is every time you put a movie and it's a superhero movie, even if it's not a good one, it's still making a, a ton of money every single time. And we haven't had the games. Like, that's the thing. We used to always have those movie tie-in games, which were not good most of the time, but we just don't get those games anymore. We have Spider-Man, and, like, before that, well, what was the last one we had? Like, the Telltale ones. Like, we yeah. just don't get those games like Marvel Peace. Alliance or anything like that. Like, yeah, we need that kind of stuff. Or we need like a Hulk uh, Ultimate Destruction game say, for coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you said you said you look at the movies, and for some other reason, my brain just went to like the idea of them announcing like you played Spider Man, and we've got Doctor Strange or something. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> like yeah. in my head. Black Panther get, get a Black Man Panther game. only on Xbox. <laughs> Not get a Black Panther game or something like that. That'd be huge. Yeah, yeah X Men. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of leash here you, you can go a lot of different ways mm-hmm. um i'll just say this kevin before i give you to any more predictions you have we started this conversation setting your expectations and you all said it's got to be better than gamescom but it won't be nearly as good as e3 and then we've discussed them buying rocksteady obsidian <laughs> they're gonna have like an exclusive <laughs> batman game like we've all just completely went off the rails if half of this is true this is better than any e3 conference they've had since this gin so <laughs> I think That's expectations true. are maybe a little higher than they should be. That's yeah. true. I mean, I think what we're going to see before I get into my last prediction, I think what we're going to see is better quality announcements versus quantity announcements. And that's the thing. It's like E3 was announcement, 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 announcement. Sure. They just threw stuff at you. Not all of it was great. So I, th- I, where my mind went was like comparing it to E3 was like they're not going to have anywhere near the announcements they had at E3. Like I think it's going to be much more reined in, but they're going to talk longer about everything at this one. So I think we might still get some of those bigger bombshells than E3 had as far as the quality of the content, but they're just going to talk about it for a long time because they're not going to have as much to rein in. My last prediction, there will not be any hardware talk at XO. They're not going to talk the next Xbox. They might show a new controller or something like that, but because they did so much at Gamescom, they were clearing that out for the holiday season, and they're not going to talk hardware at this event. You don't think it's possible that they show us like like a chip diagram like they did for X like a year before we ever knew I think it if was. they're smart I think if they're smart they don't they're it's still Project trying to win Scarlet this. and here's a chip and a thing and nothing. they're still trying to win this right now and, and you got to think about when they showed the Xbox One X everyone was like what the heck I just got the One S and mm-hmm. people got mad about it now now you're going to try and tell Xbox One X this holiday season they're doing all this backwards compatibility these games are Xbox One X enhanced like that's their talk right now Hmm. the worst possible thing they can do in my mind right now is start talking next gen because they they're not done with this gen yet like that's the thing uh sony shouldn't be talking about it either but here's the thing is like sony's already won this gen yeah they have they they can start thinking what's next xbox is on damage control right now hey we need to keep our our people that are with us still staying loyal and we got to try and rein in some new people and show them all these awesome things we have with game pass with you know all these types of services we can offer on top of the game content they need to focus on that and you know take a page out of Sony. It's time to talk about what really matters, the games. And that's what Microsoft mm-hmm. needs to focus on is the games, the content, the services they have. Do not talk about hardware, especially next gen yet. Save it for E3. Piggybacking off of your point, would you think it's crazy to see a, a Project Scorpio Xbox One X price cut? No, I could see that. That would be nice. Maybe 40 bucks. Because uh, it's definitely, you know, I think that's if if I think if you've had any interest and you haven't bought one, that's got to be like probably the reason. So maybe bringing definitely. it down a little bit, um, or like you know some trade-in specials like GameStop is doing with with uh, Rock uh, Rock Stars and say Rockstar with Red Dead like this week. Have you seen that? If you buy yeah. Red Dead and trade in, you get like a hundred dollars off and all that. It's that's a pretty sweet deal. Okay, Josh, any more predictions? Nope, I'm all dry. 
The only thing that I would say is that I really hope that we get to see some updates on some of these exclusive mm-hmm. uh, indie games that we've seen at E3s for the past couple of years that we still don't know about. Like, um, like the Artful Escape comes to my mind, uh, Ashen. Like, there's several of these yeah. games that are just out there that we've seen periodically that we just have no idea when they're coming. Um, dating a few of those, I think, would be really nice in terms of just giving the fanboys some some ammo. You know, what is it you're playing on your Xbox? Well, there's five exclusive games that we're playing that, you know, that, that would be nice. Agreed. The State of the Empire, I think, is probably as best as it's been in many years, at least this console generation. We're all very excited about our Xboxes and we'll be playing on them not only this month, but next month leading into 2019. So next I thought you month, just meant the show. I thought you meant the show was the best too. it's ever been. I was like, wow, that's a dig on Nathan big time. <laughs> no, 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 no. The show definitely misses Nathan. Okay, <laughs> we all agree that uh, the show definitely misses. I miss Nathan. I, I, I don't I'm not I don't like sitting in the host chair too much. So um, definitely Nathan come back and save us next month. But uh, I'm excited to see what the fallout is from, you know, EXO. That'll be next month's show. Mm-hmm. I got to imagine we'll be talking about all about EXO. So with that, thank you for tuning in once again to the State of Empire. My name's Donnie. That's Kevin Josh. Make sure you check us out. PSVG.blog. Click on the Discord banner. Come talk all things Xbox. Check us out. Patreon.com slash make us better. Support the mothership if you're so inclined. And uh, we'll send you awesome things where you think you know. We'll send you some stickers, um, some cards, all kinds of stuff. So I appreciate it. Tell a friend. Good night, folks. Mm-hmm.